chose this life and now I must continue it. About four years ago, I'm honored tonight to have Rachma Abdi in this room, a young woman whom I met through the Empowerment Square program. Rachma, can you stand so we can see you in the audience? Rachman came to this country as a refugee after growing up in a camp in Eritrea, couldn't speak a word of English, when she walked into our mentoring program. And I remember she always said nothing to anybody, so we just kept going with the flow until she eventually started opening up to our volunteers. She was put four levels above her academic ability simply because she had to be in an age-appropriate grade. And working with Rahman taught me something. This is a young woman that would come to a homework club knowing very well she cannot even begin to read the first sentence of a lesson. She would sit there diligently and would patiently wait till every single volunteer is done with other students and if it means going one hour extra just because of that because she didn't want to be in a hurry. And today I'm proud to say after all of that Rama speaks five official languages now and including English and graduated from high school about three weeks ago, successfully with a high school diploma. And she's on her way to Mohawk College to study nursing. So why am I telling you this story? The same opportunities I've managed to connect with young people in Canada. I believe young people in Liberia are the same as our youth in this community. And there should be no reason why that the quality of service we can provide here, the quality of opportunities we can unfold here in our community for young people. I see no reason why we cannot extend our mission, our goal as an organization, anywhere on the globe for that matter, where we can be of service and build authentic relationships to change the life of over 150,000 young people. Let's now bring in the Executive Director of Empowerment Squared, Mr. Leo Johnson. Uh, I'm sure you've been listening in, uh, Mr. Leo Johnson, uh, to my conversation with Ndaba Mandela. He has a way, uh, in a way, amplified the vision of Empowerment Squared, of giving the youth an opportunity sort of to lead. How critical is this quest? Very critical, and in fact, that's been the driving force behind the idea of an organization like Empowerment Squared. And in many ways, I tell people that um, I see the work we do as a tiny fraction of the kind of vision that Ndaba had put forth for the African continent. And many people think um, this work is just for Africans, but in many ways I tell people, no, it's for the good of our world. Mm -hmm. And the leadership that Ndaba is providing, I think will go a long way in inspiring someone like me or other youth and young people around the world who are willing to step to the plate and offer their contribution once we can have a kind of force like that um, Ndaba brings to the table. Mm. And Daba, how is it important for the establishment of the Liberian Learning Center uh, embarked by the uh, Empowerment Squared team? Oh, this is very key. I mean, our organization is also working on a very similar project known as the African Resource Center, where we've partnered with the Nelson Mandela Museum in our own village. Uh, and we are starting with uh, computer literacy because kids in our village finish high school without even touching a computer. Now, how are we as Africans to compete on a global level when our kids do not understand the use of technology in the 21st century. Mm. And Leo, does that actually re-echo, you know, the saying of Nelson Mandela that education is what, you know, the world can use basically to transform and change the world into sort of a, a livable world, so to say? Um, in fact, I would say that that was one reason why when um, um, and Daba put forth this vision. We saw it as a perfect opportunity for getting a platform to really re-echo that legacy and those words of Mandiba himself. Mm -hmm. And I'll say this again, education has proven time and time again that it is the only thing that's going to work. Our ability to manipulate information, our ability to translate information to properly tell our stories and how we want it to be heard or how we want it to be perceived will be the defining factor, in my opinion, if Africa is supposed to get where it should be. But uh, Ndaba and Leo, let me put this question to you uh, both. Is it not really embarrassing, really, for you know, a country like Liberia, you know, a country that was never colonized, gained its independence back in 1847, thereabout, and that nation cannot boast of a single public library? 
is it not an indictment on African leadership in Daba? To be honest with you, we also need to understand the history of this continent, of this country. We cannot just purely, you know, put a blanket statement and say that we're embarrassed because in 2016 there is no library in this. We need to understand the context of where these people are coming from. Even though they were not colonized, America had a very detrimental effect on the history of this great nation of Liberia. So, no, it is not for me an embarrassment. It is to say we need to come together as Africans and do what we know is right to do. Let us unite. Let us come together. Let us dedicate ourselves to making sure that Liberia has a library, a working library, not just in Monrovia, but across the whole nation. Um, it's not an indictment at all. It's not an embarrassment for me at all. And, and it's all about entrepreneurship, Leo. You, you wanted to come in. Absolutely. And I will be just very succinct. I think what that shows us is that for too long, we've been denied the opportunity, um, we from these countries, from Liberia specifically, the opportunity to really take and provide the leadership that we should. We are not short of resources. We are not short of human capacity to do what we should do. But like Ndaba directly said, there have been many factors depriving us of that very opportunity to do for ourselves what we should be doing. And it's about time um, that we will take issues in our own hands and work with our partners in countries like Canada, where Empowerment Square is, um, and around the world to make sure that those are willing to give us that um, form of empowerment to make sure we are leading the charge for ourselves, mm. to make sure we actually do what we ought to, to do to get to where we should be. Mm. And, and I think that's the youth empowerment that Ndaba uh, keeps talking about, right? Because you find yourself in a very critical situation in a way, because you, you yourself, you were a refugee, moved from Liberia all the way to Cote d'Ivoire, to Ghana, and then you found yourself uh, here in Canada. Let's talk about entrepreneurship. How critical is entrepreneurship to the rise of Africa? It is, um, in fact, um, it is one of the things that have been contributing hugely to the rise of Africa, in my humble opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, we've always been a very entrepreneurial people. Um, until people decided to redefine what entrepreneurship meant, um, that excluded um, a, a good chunk of the very people who were leading the charge. So it's no surprise to me that the continent is very industrial, especially young people on the continent being very entrepreneur. All I can say is I think people are finally coming around to realize that this didn't just happen overnight. It's been happening for a long time. Unfortunately, the credit hasn't been given to where credit is due, and the kind of support that, that was needed hasn't been provided. And that's why I'm quite excited about this project in Liberia, the Liberia Learning Center, but also quite excited about the vision that someone who comes from a powerful platform that has been built by the legacy of Nelson Mandela Legendaba is willing to step up front, no matter where he is, no matter who in, is in the room, to say this is what we should be doing to get to where we should be. Leo Johnson, Executive Director of Empowerment Square, thanks for joining us uh, in this conversation. I really do appreciate your time. And now to the GSR question of the day. In which year did Nelson Mandela receive the Nobel Peace Prize? A. 1992 B. 1996 C. 1993 and D. 1997 when we return, we'll wrap up our conversation with a man that has brought so much confidence to the youth of Hamilton in Canada. The first black councillor to be elected in Hamilton with so much belief in 